Well, Coach, the early signing period has begun. It's an exciting time for you, for your family, for your staff, for the Oregon State family, for Beaver Nation. I can just really sense the enthusiasm. We've been talking about it a while in general terms, but now the day has come. And just what are your thoughts about what's happened here for you and your program in this signing period? Well, obviously, we're very excited. And, and the main reason probably is we can finally comment right. on the recruits. But uh, uh, a lot of work went into this uh, recruiting class. And uh, I think people are going to be excited for more than just what they see eventually on the court, uh, but when they discover what each of these individuals stand for, uh, the kind of character they have. And, and really, uh, it's not like they're going to be the foundation. The foundation is going to be laid this season, but they're going to be great pieces we add to the mix going forward as far as rebuilding OSU basketball. And Coach, we're going to talk about each of the players individually, but as a class at this point, in terms of you know, just the pure basketball stuff and the positions and, and meeting needs and going forward, starting with the foundation you and your staff are working with now, how does this class as it's comprised now help and just in terms of filling out a roster? Well, it's, it's, it's huge. You know, this year we we're shorthanded. We had uh, nine scholarship players. Um, and so from a roster standpoint, we'll have a complete roster for the first year um, um, in, in our time here. And, and then beyond that, we've got guys that are different positions. They're versatile. They can play multiple positions. But really, we've got a one, two, kind of a three, four, and a four, five. So we've got four of the five positions covered. Um, and so it's, it's neat that we're doing it through the high school class, building from the ground up. I really think that's essential in turning a program, putting a program in place. Um, you got these guys for four to five years. Um, and so that has us um, very excited. And, and as a group, I'm not a big rankings guy. I'm not a big polls guy. Um, I think guys can be overranked, underranked. It's neat that they're, they have a nice ranking. We'd rather have that than not. Um, but what's more important really is we're, we're doing it with kids that aren't talking about being one and done. You know, a lot of times you'll see the number two ranked class or the number five ranked class recruiting wise. Well, three of them maybe aren't even going to be there in two years. This is a group that's committed to being here four to five years, joining the people that we have currently, adding to it down the road. Um, but they're going to be here for the long haul, and that's huge because we know over time they can really help us get to where we need to go. In terms of the excitement for the program, the, that week of the Beaver football season opening with Portland State, Earlier in that week, a big kid out of Reynolds High made a commitment, then three more a couple of days after the Portland State weekend. Did the same, it looked like a package deal kind of, but what was going through your mind during that week when Drew kind of jumped the gun just a little bit? Well, it was really a thrill. It was a special time and, and I'll get more specific here in a minute. Uh, but just to give folks a little bit of the background, uh, we knew those kids were all gonna come in that weekend. Uh, Everybody just assumed my son and Coach Thompson's son, you know, was a done deal. We didn't know that, you know, and we're their fathers. And so part of me was like, when's this kid going to get it done? Um, felt good from what Stevie said about his son. Um, my son, I think, enjoyed seeing the frustration on my face a little bit that, uh, you know, he had a pretty good poker face there. Um, and then with Derek, we felt pretty good. It was just a matter of time. Uh, so fast forward to the beginning of that week, Drew was very excited. He spent the first half of August telling other schools that they were out. Uh, and it came down to us in another school um, that last week. And he, he made it official to them that he wasn't going there. And so then that told me, all right, he's going to be a beaver. And, and so he made that official with his commitment early in that week. Um, I don't think he had connected because there was a plan for all of them to do it. Um, and he just kind of, like you said, he was a little excited and maybe jumped the gun. The other three stayed up till about almost four in the morning uh, when they're on their visit in the dorm room, not out on the town, devising this plan. Uh, they all agreed that this is where they wanted to go. They talked about why they wanted to be here. Um, you know, the, the coaching staff, but the players were huge. Uh, that's the first thing they all commented on were the guys that we had. And, and if they joined forces with them, what we might be able to do. Uh, and, and then obviously the academics and the community here were huge. Uh, we didn't have any feeling that that, that was going on. 
Um, so they had their visits. We didn't get any commitments. You know, we think, Coach, we're going to take a couple of days. And that's usually what we encourage. We don't try to get them pinned down on their visit. We think it's huge that they love us when they go back home as much as they loved us when they were here because everybody's going to love you in front of you because, you know, we're sincere and we sell ourselves. And, and that's kind of what we promote. And so we were hoping it'd be a matter of days. And then the three knuckleheads <laughs> devised this plan to call me consecutively and give their commitments. Um, and, and so it was pretty neat. Derek Bruce was the first call. Uh, and, and I thought it was fishy because we came right from a workout and I went in my office and my daughter and my wife were there. Number one, my wife never comes to the office. <laughs> she just, unless it's something she absolutely has to do, she doesn't want to feel like she's intruding. So, and I saw a little bit of a grin on her face and I said, what is this all about? And she can't keep, she doesn't have a good <laughs> poker face. So I knew something was up. Yeah. She says, well, I better let it out. I've got a present for you. And she handed me a big eight by 10 photo, a senior picture of Trace holding a basketball out like this with a Beavers jersey. <laughs> and so yeah, that was pretty neat. And it was basically after she handed me that, she handed me a card that he had written on his trip back to Missoula um, to start school. Um, and it was, it was hard, and I, I don't want to get choked up right now, but um, the, the outside of the card was, said wish list. And basically what he said was, Dad, if you could have any wish um, on the planet, what would it be? Would it be for more money than anybody could have? Would it be for any car you could desire? Would it be for a mansion? Mine would be to play for the most impressive coach that I've ever known in my life, who happens to be my father, wow. so on and so forth. And um, I know that it won't be great all the time. We'll butt heads because of we're competitive, but that's my wish. And he says, Dad, I hope that was what you wished for as well. So that, that, that got me melting right there. Absolutely. And as soon as I read the last word, the phone rang, and it was him giving his commitment. So it was pretty neat. Yeah. And then Stevie followed right thereafter. So the way that they handled it, the fact that they wanted to do it together was really impressive. It wasn't like, well, I'll do it one day. Hey, you do it the next and make it about the individual. It was, let's do this collectively. Um, and so that, that stood out that this is going to be a pretty special group. If that's the way they're thinking when they're 18 years old, this is a special day. Yeah. They want to share it with each other. Coach, thank you. for That's a beautiful yeah. story. It really oh, is. Thanks. Uh, it's a great story. As you know, we don't. We could talk uh, many stories uh, on each of these young men, but let's get to, let's start alphabetically, if if you don't mind, a little bit with Derek Bruce first of all, and you know what you see in him, why you were attracted to him, and how he ended up becoming a beaver. Sure, um, Coach Gottlieb and Coach Thompson brought his name to me early on, um, the end of May, we're beginning of June, when we were all in place. Um, when we talked about what we would look for in this recruiting class, and we had the decisions to make. Would we use the scholarships that might come available from the 2014 Beaver recruiting class, um, you know, or should we save it knowing we don't have any seniors? We made that decision to save them. Then what do we look for? Um, we, we knew we needed a point guard, a combo guard, a big wing, and a post. Uh, and so let's come up with a list. And Derek's list name came up on the list. Um, uh, right away, along with Stevie's son. Um, they sold me on his ability to make plays, to score inside and out, um, his level-headedness, the fact that he didn't like to lose, um, but didn't wear his emotion on the sleeves, right? So they're selling me on these. We're ta contacting his coaches, um, you know, underrated coach. He's going to be one of the best point guards in the country. You know, you need to get in there now. So we did our due diligence, and I said, listen, I need to see him play. I need to see him play multiple times, and I need to find out through our conversations over the next couple months that he's the right kind of kid. And so that's what we did, and we never were, uh, varied from that. And I think that's what won over uh, the AAU coach, is that we were upfront and honest and never wavered. And so as we evaluated him through July and, and had the conversations, he, he was hands down the top player at that position in our eyes, his ability to make plays for himself, shoot it, make plays for his teammate, get to the rim, defend with length, and really compete. Mm -hmm. uh, and so all of those characteristics, um, along with once we discovered through those conversations, 
He's a good kid with great character. We knew he was the guy. And, and then it all fell into place because he fell in love with those same things he was looking for through us here at Oregon State. And according to his AAU coach, who might be a little biased, but uh, <laughs> that he may be the most underrated point guard in the country, and this is a coach that's worked with a lot of, of fine players through the years and developed them well and coached them well. And he's a defender, too. With the, you mentioned the length, but a 6'8 wingspan. Is it, yes. Did you see that manifest? We did. We did. Um, you know, he was a guy that if it wasn't going well for him offensively, he impacted the game on the defensive and getting into passing lanes, creating havoc, pressuring the ball. Um, and, and so it was neat to see that when the ball wasn't going in the hoop, he didn't just mail it in. He found another way. Uh, and that's what was most impressive. And it's funny because his AAU guy said, you're getting a steal. And I said, you might say that now. I said, but in two to three years, you won't look at it as a steal. He'll be getting a steal for the program he's involved in. Nice. So. Because we're going alphabetically, we come to Drew Eubanks now. And the importance of getting what ESPN, according to their recruiting services, the top player in the state of Oregon as your first commit in, in your new era. So how important that was and just what kind of young man and player the 6'10 Drew Eubanks is. Well, it was neat. And, and to back up a little, you know, they wanted to make this thing all together. And I think it just was a misfiring of information because Drew, Drew wanted to do it with them as well. Mm -hmm. um, but the neat thing was the other kids said, you know, it's not all bad that an Oregonian was the first one to commit. And, and, I, and, and I said from day one, we are going to make this area our epicenter recruiting wise. And so I think it was very appropriate um, that that's the way it went down. Um, he's 6'10". He's only been playing the game for a few years. He's, gotten, he's grown by leaps and bounds from even April when we saw him play. Um, very athletic, can run and jump for days. His second jump off the floor is probably more impressive than his initial jump. Really quick twitch, goes after every shot, sometimes to a fault. Um, but we'll work on that and chases down rebounds and we think he has a tremendous upside as he continues to mature and grow and be coached by Division I coaches and playing and competing every day with other Division I players. Hmm. Well, congratulations on that. I think there's, a, again, the, the symbolism, whatever the message, but to get an Oregonian and the top player in the state right out of the shoot. I mean, that's big, isn't it? It, it really is, and, and, and it gives us a big shot in the arm with future classes in and around us here in our state. And he's another high-character guy from a great, great family. Speaking of great families, already part of your family. And maybe you could talk to us about Stevie Thompson and, and Stephen Thompson Jr. So the dad goes by Stevie and the son by Stephen. Whether that gets flipped or not in the days ahead, I have no idea. But tell us a little bit about how the Thompson family even came into your purview, so to speak. How you hired Stevie, and then that leads to, just as in the case, and we'll talk about Trace in a moment, but Stephen wanting to play for you and his dad. Sure. Uh, well, I, I played against uh, Stevie, the father, um, back in the day. And uh, we actually were part of the same group of guys that got together each summer for about a week, week and a half of intense training camp before our preparation to go wherever we were going to go play. Most of us were in Europe at the time. Uh, so we had known each other through that. We played against each other in the CBA. Um, and then on the road the last several years, we'd run into each other recruiting when he was at Cal State LA. So we would catch up uh, at the gyms. And then obviously I knew his son was a rising sophomore at the time. He would watch my son a little. We'd compare notes. Um, and then as a coach, especially when you're having some success and you think there may be an opportunity to move on, uh, you sort of try to align yourselves with people that you think would be great to work with. Uh, and so Stevie and I kind of rekindled that friendship a lot, uh, a lot the last couple of years. Not that I was out beating on the doors looking, but you have to be prepared, right? Uh, and so once this happened here at Oregon State, and I looked at the kind of people I wanted to surround myself with, uh, his name was one that quickly emerged. And then um, we talked, we had phone interviews, um, brought him up here uh, once we were in place. Um, a lot of people assumed that it was to try to get his son or sons. And uh, that really is kind of a bonus uh, as people that have gotten to know the father. Uh, he's an outstanding man. He's a heck of a coach. Um, 
he's one of these coaches that knows when to speak, and when he does, it makes great sense. Sometimes you can have some guys that talk just to talk, um, and, and he really knows to pick his spots. High character, great family, mm -hmm. and uh, I think is a very, very good representative of Beaver Athletics, not just our program, in all of his workings here around the community. So we're thrilled to have him. Now his son uh, was, was a kid I didn't see much, but a time or two. And then um, when things came down here and we got to see him uh, play against my son in the Rose City Classic, and then in July, um, you know, on the recruiting trails, very long-armed, very crafty. He's a, he's a kid that looks almost like it's kind of in cruise control because he's so smooth, um, competitive. And I saw him make seven, eight threes in a half this summer can really shoot it, can make plays off the dribble, very deceptive defensively, long arms, good athlete, um, a guy that needs to get in the weight room. And when he gets a body, I think it could be, you know, very, very impressive in our conference uh, with his ability to play and his level of competitiveness and his IQ. So, and he can also play a couple of positions. He can play the point, he can play off the ball. And if he gets a little more uh, strength, he could even play a small forward position. The catch and shoot part of it. I mean, those guys are not the easiest to find. Is he, in your view, even though he's always got to work on the craft, but does he come with that quality already? He catch does. And shoot? He has it. He has it. Yeah. He can fill it up. And, uh, you know, he, he's pretty good off the dribble, which is, is, is really not the case for a lot of young shooters. Uh, but he's a spot up guy, and he's a guy that can knock it down off the dribble as well. Mm -hmm. But that's not all he can do. Right. He can make plays off the dribble, he can finish at the rim, and he's a really good playmaker as far as sharing the ball. And another high character individual. The high character and, and high IQ, basketball yes. IQ and smarts, the son of a, of a fine player and coach. So as we transition to another man, a young man, the son of a coach, your son, Trace, you've already shared the poignant story about how he shared the moment of his commitment to play for you. So that it speaks for itself how special that bond is. But just if you were not his father and walked into a gym and just evaluated Trace Tinkle, the basketball player, without knowing much else about him, what, what kind of things would jump out at you and have jumped out, obviously, at a lot of other people to make him a top 50 recruit? You know, I would, I would say he's a competitor. That would be the first thing that you notice when you walk in a gym, that you know, whether the score, they're up 20 or down 20, you couldn't tell by the look in his eye because he's getting after it. Um, crafty player, lefty, which you know can cause problems because you know they're a little or unorthodox. A great finisher at the rim, a solid shooter in space from from depth, and um, really a guy that makes good decisions. Heady on the defensive end, uh, you know anticipates well, sees the floor, plays the passing lanes, and rebounds it. Um, so a high IQ guy, skilled with size, um, but more than anything is really that low level of competitiveness. Okay, and that's, again, that's just a, the basketball part of it. If you were a neutral observer watching a kid play, you want to get to some of the deeper personal things and the character things that you've instilled and that you know him well. It speaks to me, Coach, that, you know, as much as I know the local community here in Corvallis, the programs here were excited about the possibility of him maybe wanting to play a senior year here. Mm -hmm. The fact that he chooses to stay and the reasons for it, to, to play in his senior year at Hellgate, again, speaks to a team guy and a guy that wants to, to, to finish his high school experience in the right way and win another state title. So tell us what that, how that decision, how he arrived at that and what that means to you. Well, we've, we've been criticized uh, probably as often as we've been complimented. You know, you're showing true love by letting him do that. Um, but people are like, how can you leave your son behind and all that sort of thing? Well. Um, we, we advised him just like we did through the recruiting process as he looked at other schools um, and, and he, he said we started something that we need to finish and he said it's beyond basketball dad he said I've been going to school with a lot of these kids since kindergarten he said trying to win a state title is huge but he said I'm going to be every bit as proud that day in June that we walk across the stage mm -hmm. together and get our diplomas and that's what really hit me and said okay this kid gets it. Um, so it was tough. And, and he came to Corvallis in August, really enjoyed it. 
made some buddies, you know, Joe Casey mm -hmm. and some of those sure. guys. Um, and it wasn't like he thought this isn't the right level or this is too high a level or I could come here and it was, you know, I'm just much more comfortable with that group of guys and what we really set out to do the minute we lost that state title last year. Mm -hmm. And so how do you argue that? Um, you know, and, and he's with great people um, who actually couple that grew up in Junction City, Eric and Deb Hayes. Mm -hmm. um, so he's living with them, playing for their son, and we've got a lot of people there looking out for him. Yeah. So um, it's going to be tough on the family. My wife's going to make a lot of trips mm -hmm. to Spokane to see Ellie, you know, to, to Missoula to see Trace. She's already been to Turkey to see Joss. Um, but we'll get through it and yeah. we'll be better uh, for it um, down the road. That competitiveness you speak of, from the time he's little and first and has a basketball in hand, could you always kind of feel that? Did you have a sense as he was growing up, Coach, that, hey, my son can be pretty good? I mean, did you kind of feel that all along? Certainly. In, in any sport or any activity that he chose to participate, it was like a switch went off when it was practice or game time. And he got into a focus. And there were times he lost it a little bit, a time or two, um, which was part of his growth and maturity the last year and a half. Uh, I know I saw a comment on him, what he learned from this summer. There was a time that the whole gym was surrounded by coaches, high level team they were playing against. They got very physical, cheap shot, smack talk, and it took him out of his game. Um, he realized and he admitted it. I gotta realize I've gotta keep my focus. Um, and so, you know, soccer when he was young, track and field, even, even the track events that the sixth grade had, you know, that, that wasn't against another school, but just competitive within. He, he, he had to try to go for the gold, so to speak. Um, homework, you know, early on he had struggled with reading. So my wife, we read to him all the time. He improved mathematics. Now he's a whiz. He didn't want to be the weak link in the family as he watched his older sisters mm -hmm. be successful sports, academics. And so he had that burning desire to be the best for whatever that means. Yeah. Um, and almost to where at times we had to tell him that there was an element of enjoyment <laughs> in these things and that he couldn't miss that. Um, the thing is, his release to that was being a knucklehead, jumping off of garages into a lake, <laughs> skateboarding off of jumps. Well, I mean, okay, those were right. the things right. that he snowboarded and skied when he was younger. Mm -hmm. And those were kind of his fun outlets. But when it was something competitive, um, he was going to grind it out. It's my understanding that, that at least Trace and Drew and Stevie, uh, Steven, I should say, have played some pickup games together with your guys here, and you all, you know, whether you're probably not able to watch all of right. that, but the sense that I got in reading and seeing tweets and things about it is the, there was some interaction going on in those stages, even before the commitments, just that showed that, that these guys like each other already, that there's some chemistry building, not only with the guys that we're talking about today, the signees, and but your current guys that are you're building the foundation with. So tell us a little bit about the significance of maybe having already had some court time together. I think that's big. I think that really bodes well for the future as far as developing chemistry. Uh, I give a lot of credit to our current guys um, because they could have been a little defiant when my son was here over the summer, Coach Thompson's, you know, these ranked guys, and they were very welcoming. Um, they did a great job through the recruiting process. Um, and so it was neat. I think it gave our, our recruits a real sense of family and feel and how things were going to be. Um, and so I, 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 I applaud our guys for that. And, and the neat thing is when they finish their senior years, they'll be able to come here right away, you know, because this is where their family lives. Wait for summer school to start, but still be able to come in and get to work and participate and grow with some of the other guys that will be around. So I think it'll give us a real jump start to when we start for real next September. Finally, foundationally, every one of these guys that we've talked about, less so with a little bit with Trace, just in terms of describing his skill set, but all of your guys on the current team talk about when I talk to them about what's important to you. Defense is very important to you. 
and to your staff. And you've inst you're instilling this culture and attitude and conviction about the importance of defense. So I assume Trace has learned these, these lessons too. You've talked about the other guys as defenders. How about Trace as a defender? Yeah, I think he's going to have a real, again, versatility, ability to, um, you know, against bigger, stronger guys, uses athleticism to keep it out of the post. Uh, maybe guys that are a little smaller and quicker use his length. Uh, to keep them from getting by him. Uh, he, he's a guy that his coaches at, at Hellgate have done a great job because early on as a gifted offensive guy, you might not focus on the other end. And when dad and mom are hollering at you to focus, you might grow a little bit of a deaf ear. He's matured, that's been part of the process. Mm -hmm. And he's made it the last couple of years uh, a real priority. Uh, I think he can, like the others, um, be a little bit of a game changer with their length, with their IQ and anticipation. Um, you know, so it's going to be fun. All those guys we've talked about, length, IQ, yeah. character. Um, I think that's what's going to stand out with this class as we continue to move forward with them. And it's an it's an exciting time, coaches. There, I mean, it's the early signing period that's begun. You know, we've talked about you know the the class as it as it, it currently configured. It's exciting. Is there a possibility? I mean, it, it, is there anything else that could be on the horizon? Sure, could be. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're continuing to recruit. Um, you know, we technically have four scholarships, and even though these kids sign, um, because of the situation with me being on campus, Coach Thompson and our sons. I mean, there's things we can do creatively uh, if we feel like we, we, we've got another player that we can bring in that could, could really help us. So we're going to continue to recruit. Um, you know, we may have uh, another commitment here before too long. Um, right now, it's, it's, it's kind of we're, we're in the park with another size player, um, a physical uh, post. Uh, Drew's very athletic and can play inside and out. We feel like we ne may need even more of a physical presence um, down low. So that there's uh, a lot of opportunity out there and a lot of people that we're looking at. And we may even add to it in the spring. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as we build this thing, we need to identify, you know, who's on page with us, how many of them are on page with us, um, and let's move forward. So we're always, always operating in that area, um, and, and hopefully. Um, this year with laying that foundation, we'll add the right pieces next year uh, and continue to build this thing. I really wanted to mention, and, and it goes along with the character and the focus and discipline of this class combined, their grade point average is over a 3.6 between the four of them. So nice. not only are they highly touted recruits, mm -hmm. uh, but they're great students. And, and so that sends a real message um, to mm -hmm. the madness that we have yeah. in building um, that the, the, we don't talk about it on one side and then do a different thing over here. Mm -hmm. We're bringing in really good players yeah. that are, are better kids and great students as well. Very impressive. And we close with, you've touched on it a number of times, but the foundation's right now. I mean, as yes. excited as we all are, we want to see your son and Steven and everybody. You're coaching a team right now, a team that you, you, you're working with day to day and the season's going to get rolling soon. And, so just tell me how important right now and everything that's going on with these kids and how much they're buying in and committing to what you're trying to do, laying the foundation for your son and Steven and Drew and Derek to walk into next year. Well, it's, it's big. I mean, this is year one. Um, there's nobody trying to throw in the towel on this season because we've got some hungry, talented kids here um, that are chomping at the bit for opportunity. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're learning new things. They're, they're learning a new way of doing things. Um, they're, they're learning a new philosophy, um, not just about the game, but about life and, and, and what we're expecting of them. Uh, so there's going to be some challenges, but they're kind of starting to uh, relish in that nobody's expecting much mm -hmm. out of us. Let's carry that chip on our shoulder. So we can, that's kind of how we coached even when we had really good teams on paper to keep that edge. Um, and so I think it's big that we'll be able to identify there may be some guys that can't handle it when it's all said and done. Hopefully they all do. Uh, and then we add this group to them. Now we really have something in place with the foundation we've laid. Um, the guys that we bring in next year, you know, might be some of the struts and that sort of thing as we build um, and we continue in, in, in classes to come down the road. Well, Coach, congratulations on sharing all of these thoughts with us on a, 
on a great day for the program and, and everything that's going on here. Thank you for taking the time for us and congratulations to you and your staff and your family. Thanks, it's always a pleasure, buddy, and let's make sure it's not six more months before we talk again. <laughs> Promise, Coach, thank you.